Are you curious about bodies, pleasure, and possibilities? And what about curious about what others are up to on the planet when it comes to pleasure, sex, and play? Have you considered what pleasure can do for your life, your body, and your bank account? Do you know something magical, delightful, and out of this world orgasmic is not only possible for you, but totally available to you? If you're ready to be the magical, sexual, sexy beast you know you can be, and you just need the tools to get there, you're in the right place. Now, here's the host of The Pleasure Zone, sensual movement artist, relationship, and sex alchemist, Milica Yelenich. Welcome, my sweet pleasure seekers. Today, we're having a conversation about energy, because why not? So... A lot of these shows that I've been doing in the last maybe year have been quite um, technical, biological. They've had a lot of things to do with like our physiology and physiological responses in the body. And I wanted to kind of get back to some of my core roots for today, welcoming in 2023. And some of my core roots are based in energy work. And some of my core roots are based in uh, developing different and, and expressing and transmuting different energies in the body, but also what happens when we withhold energies as well. And there's more to energies than just these three categories that I've, I've put on this title. So there's more than you can do many more things with energy other than withholding, expressing and transmuting them. But I'm going to talk about these main three uh, to me. These are main three to me. And I didn't actually do any research before this show, which I usually do quite a lot of research. Uh, in this case, I only just looked up some words so I can give you dictionary meanings of some words, but that's not really what today is about. Today is about really tapping into our bodies and noticing the difference between certain things. So I I had this crazy phone call that was so inappropriate on um, January 1st, at a most ridiculous hour on January 1st that actually sparked the idea for this show because I was like, wow, well, there's like selfishness involved in the, the phone call. It was all about the person needing my attention at like 7.30 a.m. on New Year's Day. Um, and due to the fact that I have uh, an elderly father and an aunt that is quite ill, I answered the phone, much to my chagrin. I should not have answered the phone anyway, or should I have, because it came up with this topic. So what it was, was on the other end, I had somebody going, well, I have a really high sex drive and I don't know what to do, a uh, really high sexual energy and I don't know what to do with it. And I was like, oh gosh, here we go. Here's one of those braggarts again, who's just trying to like get in the sack with me again. Like this happens more often than you can imagine. And guys, that is not my job. My job is not to sleep with you. Let's just clarify. That is not... Mm, I could, and I choose not to because none of you have enough money for it. I know that already. All right, so let's clear that up. Please do not call me at 7 a.m. on a Sunday or 7.30 a.m. on a Sunday. I do not work on Sundays. And it, you can absolutely connect with me through my website and book time. I want to clarify that too. Go to my website. There's a book now link. Clarifying. Go there. Book now. And if I happen to be busy that week, guess what? You get to book for the next week. I know what, I have a life. All right. I wanted to really be clear on that because there seems to have been some misunderstanding in the universe. So when you call me and tell me you have super high sexual energy and I check in on that and I'm like, no, you have high sex drive. And for some of you listening, you're like, well, that's the same thing. No, no, it's not. Sex drive is what happens in our bodies when our bodies get aroused and our bodies have different hormones running that stimulate your body, that get your body rocking and rolling. And again, it's not the same, like we talked about in the last episode, pleasure, desire, and arousal are not the same, but people often mistake them. So when you tell me you have high sexual energy, what do you mean? Do you have a lot of things that are pleasurable in your life? Does everything stimulate you? Like from one of our previous episodes, sexual inhibitors, sexual exciters. Do you have an enormous number of sexual exciters? 
does looking at my orchid without flowers turn you on? Like, does everything, does everything get your body aroused? Does everything send blood flow to your genitals? Does everything stimulate your brain to have, send the signals to have your body be turned on? Okay, then you have a lot of sexual exciters. That doesn't mean you have high sexual energy. Energy is not the same. We're talking about biological chemical responses in your body compared to energetic responses in your body. The biophysics compared to the biochemistry. And I don't think a lot of people talk about the biophysics compared to the biochemistry. So that's what we're going to be tapping into today. The biophysics of the body is the energetics of the body. And yes, sometimes chemical reactions might influence that and the uh, energetics can sometimes influence the biochemistry. However, different approaches to the body. Okay. So we're not going to be discussing the biochemistry of body today. That's where you would, we talked about that in the last show on arousal, on uh, pleasure, on desire, and arousal having different things to do with all those chemical reactions in the body, physiological responses to pressure or stroking or touch or any of the different sensory reactions where your body has arousal, different. Then pleasure, different than desire. Okay, so we're just going to get really clear again for those of you who missed last week's show. So when we're looking at what is sexual energy. So I don't really want to culturally appropriate everything that has to do with uh, Hindu belief systems where uh, we talk about chakra, where the, you know, there are chakras that are discussed. And for those of you who don't know what chakras are, they're essentially uh, ener spheres and energy wheels in the body. Okay. For those of you who don't know this, this is actually part of a very, very ancient text. This information is from very, very ancient texts, all written in Sanskrit. So the word chakra is Sanskrit. These are all very old practices that have been culturally appropriated by the West. You know, they're probably the one of the most culturally appropriated things that we're doing these days is talking about, you know, in the energy world, talking about chakras as if we're all uh, practicing Hindus. We're not. <laughs> so, I have issue with it. Um, so it's like, I don't know. I could make it akin to other things, but I don't think anything else has been so culturally appropriated other than um, indigenous cultures and um, different things like smudging that has been totally culturally appropriated from different indigenous cultures. Yes, there are smudging things and rituals that come from different other cultures, like European cultures have their other ways of doing incense, but the show's not about cultural appropriation, which it could be because that's where I was headed. Because a lot of information about energy um, and energy work comes from very ancient cultures. And it's it's information that we have now used and westernized and simplified. And these were like ancient informations that were passed on in a very sacred way, in a very where you would like have somebody who was your your mentor for life teaching you things. And yes, I get we're in a different age and things are faster, incredibly faster. Um, but I'm going to refer to this as energy, as in we have energy in our body and we have different kinds of energy in our body. So for those of you who are listening and you want and you feel like compelled to tell me about chakras and how much you know about chakras, that's great. I do too. I'm not an expert because I I'm not a yogi and I haven't sat in an ashram for 20 years and I have not become an expert in it. So I'm not going to even pretend to be an expert in it. I'm aware of it. And I have, I have some very minimal, um, you know, I've only got maybe 20 years of experience with chakras and I've only got that from a Western perspective. All right. So we have, we definitely can, you can just tap into some parts of your body and you can notice that there are different things going on. And if you don't know how to tap into your body, what you want to do is you want to get still in a way that you're quiet in an environment that's quiet. You can close your eyes to try and clear off some of the other stimuli, like things you're looking at. You can try and hone in. And I say try because for a lot of people, it is a try. They're like, they'll be like, I can't do it. And it's like, okay, so you're trying. Um, however, you could just take some deep breaths, close your eyes, begin to become aware of your body. And just notice that maybe your feet 
feel different than your knees and maybe your knees feel different than your pelvis and maybe your pelvis feels different than your stomach and your stomach feels different than your between your breasts and maybe your breasts in between your breasts feels different than your throat and in between you know, where your throat is maybe feels different than your forehead and your forehead might feel different than the top of your head. They all might feel slightly different. So lots of different reasons for that, you know, physiologically, biologically, we have different um, amounts of nerves and blood running through those parts. We have different muscles. We have different um, stimuli or parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems are running to always check and see if we're safe. So they're gonna have different reactions in the body. So when we tap into our body and we check, where is my sex, like, where is my sexual energy? This is out of a curiosity state, not to assume that, that all teachings uh, from ancient texts are incorrect, but this is for you to know it from your knowing rather than know it from what you've read or what you've been told by everybody else. So check in your body, where, where is my sexual energy? Again, don't assume that you are going to be tapping into it from this specific place that everybody's always told you it comes from. So tap in. I know for me today, it's in a very funny place. So <laughs> um, it's not in an expected place. You know, sometimes sexual energy would be, should be, could be sitting right where all of our reproductive organs are, would be, should be, could be. But however, today for me, it's not, and it can change. So just know that that energy can move and change. And this, I don't know, this may be a new perspective on energies. I don't know, because it's not something I read. It's something I experience. So when I check on that, I'm like, oh, look at that. Sexual energy is in my belly button today. I don't need to go into like figuring out why. And I'm, I'm sure there's some, if I really wanted to go, why is it there? I mean, I could send myself down a little rabbit hole trap to figure out why it's there. It's there, cool, there's my sexual energy, cool. Is there anything that I can utilize this with or in today? You know, so we talk about different, the three different ways that I put on the title today for this show as withholding, expressing and transmuting sexual energy so when we're transmuting is a different thing than withholding is a different thing than expressing so what can we do with these energies let me give you a hint like what is withholding so withholding by definition of dictionary um withholding is a refusal to give something that is due or desired so if your energy is there and you're withholding um as in you're not giving what is desired uh that's also something to be aware of so what are you withholding it from? Who are you withholding it from? Just something to also know, like who and what are you withholding it from? So it's, it's something that maybe you're in an environment where there are people that you've had arguments with, you're not feeling so great, so hot, and this comes down to kind of like sexual inhibitors that we talked about a few shows ago. Withholding, intentional withholding, where it's not something that you're unaware of, where your body is just being really turned off, but you're not um, aware of it. Sexual inhibitors sometimes are things we don't have awareness of or we can't quite tap into. We just know that something's not quite working for us. Withholding is very intentional. Withholding is that you know the energy is there and you're choosing not to do something with it. And so let's just try for 17 minutes to withhold our breath. We know our breath is there. And, and if, if we chose to withhold breath for 15 minutes, what, would, what do you think? Let's just try. How long can you actually withhold your breath for? Like I can withhold my breath or a breath hold for maximum about two and a half minutes. I know there are people who are expert breath holders who can hold their breath for like 15 minutes or more. Um, experts, these are people who are trained for a really long time in breath holding. I'm not that. And that doesn't also mean, I mean, there are people who have practiced holding their 
sexual energy, withholding their sexual energy intentionally for a very long time as well. And that can be a practice and it can be a practice that's incredibly beautiful because it has to do with um, learning self-control. And if that's what you're into and that is what gets you by in a day, go for it. If withholding is something that has you feel really um, happy in life, withholding is also a technique used in BDSM where you're withholding orgasms from the person, where you're saying, no, you, you, know, you can't do that right now. Maybe not with aggression. It's a playful thing and BDSM should always be consensual. I want to repeat that about 500 times. BDSM should always be consensual. Actually, all sex, all contact of sex should be consensual. Um, and especially uh, some play that is sometimes on the edge, which appears non-consensual, should be consensual. So consensual non-consent, completely different story for today. Withholding is slightly like that, but we're talking about the energetics here. So if you withhold energy, you withhold sexual energy, what, is, what will that be and do for your body? I know we haven't defined sexual energy yet. I'm just asking you to check in on it. What does it feel like to withhold it? What does it feel like to express it? What does it feel like to transmute it? I know we haven't defined those yet, but check in with that. We're going to head to our next commercial break. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome, my sweet pleasure seekers. Today we're talking about sexual energy, which, like I said before, is not the same as desire, is not the same as arousal, is not the same as necessarily pleasure. Sexual energy is one of those things that assists in being alive. What is sexual energy? So I kind of let dragged you guys through that first segment. No, I didn't. I invited you actually to keep on listening because sexual energy, and there's a bunch of different definitions on sexual energy. A lot of them have been defined by um, researchers, I suppose, who are looking at sexual energy more from a libido standpoint rather than an energetics of the body standpoint. Um, so a little different. However, there are some practitioners out there, of course, who are totally on uh, board and on point with what I'm talking about. Um, there is, uh, I, I found a little definition by somebody in, um, interesting, it's, it's in, it is in an article called wellandgood.com. Uh, and uh, sorry, on a website called wellandgood.com, how to use sexual energy to manifest your dream life. So uh, in that, uh, the author describes sexual energy 
sexual energy is your life force that connects you to your soul point and the cosmos. It holds the energetic imprint of your consciousness and soul map. I quite like that definition um, because it's not saying that it sits in any particular place in your body. It's just what connects you to your soul map. It's part of who you be. It's part of why you exist. Sexual energy is fascinating. It can be sexual uh, energy can be sexual as in what people utilize to um, create on this planet. And so that can be used even by plants have sexual energy. Trees have sexual energy, animals have sexual energy. And that doesn't mean you're going to be romping and humping all of them. I hope you're not romping and humping animals because there's no consent there. I'm all about consent and communication. So yeah, there's no consent there. If you're humping a tree, I hope you get consent. But um, again, I don't have a say in that. But you know, all things consensual are cool. So sexual energy, what, what is it that we have like totally misidentified it as? Like, I know that people are walking around thinking sexual energy is your libido. Fine, you can call it that, but sweetheart, it's not your libido. Your libido is your libido. Your sexual energy is part of like what sparks life and is part of your life. <clears throat> it's part of how you are alive, actually. So there is biochemistry involved in how you're alive. And then we have the sexual energy of what also contributes to you being alive. The biochemistry was when the sperm and the ovum got together and then created a zygote and then you grew and now you're you. That was part of the biochemistry of it all, the physiology of it all, all the ways that we grow. And not, and, and part of that experience is a spark of incredible amount of energy of itself, life force energy that goes into the body that has this aliveness. Like when your life force energy goes, your body still exists for a while as it decomposes and changes, right? And there's still biochemical reactions going on in your body as you decompose. But your biophysics may have changed. You'll still have molecules in your body that have energy moving around too. So that is a little different as well. But your soul, let's just talk about it from like your, your sexual energy connected to your soul and the cosmos. What does that mean? When I say that to you, do you are you like, whoa, she's like right out in left field, woo land today. Maybe, maybe I am. <laughs> so what I invite you to do is look at it from a different perspective that sexual energy is not necessarily your libido. And what can you do with energies? Well, you can do a lot of different things with energy. Today, we're talking about withholding energy, expressing energy, transmuting energy. And we've talked slightly on withholding and like, what is withholding? So when you, when you're withholding um, from somebody, there's a noun and an adjective for that. So the noun of withholding is a refusal to give something that is due or desired. So in a partnership, if you are not, um, you're with a partner who would like to have um, intercourse with you or something like that and you are like no and you're refusing you're withholding affection um, that's also the adjective you're not ex expressing affection or warmth or feeling um, so the refusal to do that refusal in itself I would actually think refusal is a verb, but you know the dictionary is saying it's a noun, so whatever. I would say it's an action withholding, and I just like move my whole video there on you guys. You're welcome. So when you're in refusal, in refusal, and you're withholding, what will that do for your body? Like I was mentioning before, if you were withholding breathing, what does that do to your body? Certain things kick in, right? So when you're withholding your energy, uh, withholding your breath, we'll start with that. And you're withholding your breath, say, for 15 or 17 or 20 minutes. What would start to happen? So if you're being suffocated, what starts to happen is your body starts to go into different responses to try and survive, right? It starts to shut certain things down, create some issues. Um, so yeah, if you're, if you're withholding breath or having your you're you know, being choked to death and you're ha having your breath being withheld from you, then 
there is like a suffering that happens in the body. Like a, the body will respond with all kinds of shutdowns. So why have we decided that sexual energy is any different than the breath of life? Because when we are breathing and we are alive, we have sexual energy running through our bodies to keep us alive. There is a, um, you know, I can't get his spelling of the name right, but in my head, otherwise I would spell it. Um, his name is Reich and he talked about uh, orgasmic energy. He talked a lot about organ and organite. And organ is like the orgasmic energy of the universe. And during commercial break, I'll look up his name. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so organ and organite. And those are the sexual energies, the orgasmic energies of the universe. For in that case, the sexual energy and orgasmic energy are interchangeable. They are these energies of aliveness. They are the creative spark. They are what keeps us alive and they are what invites us into greater creation on the planet, invention, inspiration, all of these other things. And I bring up inspiration because the word inspiration is to inspire, to bring in breath is what inspiration is. And here we are on Inspired Choices Network. We are bringing in breath, breathing new life into everything. So inspire. Um, breath and withholding breath is similar to like withholding creative energy creative sexual forces as well as orgasmic energy so when we inspire we're also bringing in life force energies as well it's like if you've ever practiced qigong or tai chi and you've done deliberate breath work to build energy you'll notice a difference your body will change in temperature and change in strength uh train change also in its capabilities, capacities. Um, so it's a fascinating thing. So when you're withholding sexual energy, what does it do to your body? Let's just tap in. Is it the same as if you are withholding your own breath for say 15 or 20 minutes? If you're withholding your sexual energy, what does it do to your body? Does it start to shut things down in the same way that you know, your body could be shutting down with um, withholding your breast. My body has a yes to that. And that doesn't mean that's true across the board. For my body, withholding sexual energy absolutely has me start to like fall apart. My body starts to feel really off. I start to get imbalanced. And that could even be withholding for like five or 10 minutes. And that could just be out of like, I'm mad and I'm going to withhold. And it's like, wait a second, this is not doing my body a favor. It's not doing anybody's body a favor. This energy is actually what's required to, you know, assist co-create on the planet. And so allowing that energy to flow is such a gift. And how do you have it flow? Well, that's through expression and transmutation, which we will talk about. So withholding i mean you might be doing it as a spiritual practice for something where you're learning how to hold the energy and just like holding your breath could be a spiritual practice as well um you know holding an, an energy can be a spiritual practice as well so yes if you are being trained on how to hold eventually at some point even when you're doing breath holds you will expel air you will express it you will breathe out at some point so the withholding, I mean, you may be able to try and withhold for the rest of your life. Even people who have done vows of celibacy express sexual energy in different ways. Often they will take that sexual energy and express it in things like creative endeavors through art or through, um, you know, music or anything like that. They'll use that energy in a creative expression. So even if you are very devoted to celibacy, which can be a beautiful practice, I know that's weird for somebody to say on the pleasure zone, but it's as valid as a practice as being a sexual healer um, who's, at, who's actually physically going out having sex with people. Um, there are lots of different kinds of sexual healing, but you know we could go from one extreme to the other where you're having sex every day as a sexual healer or even as a prostitute or whatever you happen to choose where you're having sex like 12 hours a day or something, 
or you could be completely celibate. Both are totally valid practices for spiritual practice and also for, for utilizing sexual energy. So in vows of celibacy, if you are uh, taking a vow of celibacy, then utilizing that energy in a creative, expressive way is great. And, or if you happen to have more sexual exciters than your partner, where you're turned on all the time, if you, if you feel like it's such, um, if you really feel like it's such an amazing thing to be turned on all the time, but your partner doesn't feel it, and you have, you know, you have a commitment to your lover, where you are choosing to be um, monogamous, then maybe you aren't feeling like it's a really good idea to go out and express your sexual energy with other lovers. Then your choice might be to create something else, be in a creative endeavor. So you might be writing a book, creating paintings, doing other things. Um, I have, I, my husband has high sexual energy, which is not the same as high sex drive. And uh, my body has high, both high sex drive and high sexual energy only in certain circumstances. Like I get super turned on by brilliance. So when my husband comes in and tells me like a super smart idea, I'm like, can I take you now? He said something smart the other day and I was like, that is so hot. When we were watching something, he's like, there's no logic in that. And I was like, oh, you're turning me on right now, man. Talk to me about logic. <laughs> so for some of you who heard the story before, I think it was like on my first or second date with my husband or first or second, I don't know. We had sex early on. We knew each other for quite a while before we um, started dating. So, um, yes, at one point he just started um, telling me really great statistics in the middle of sex. And I was like, this is really hot. You are telling me statistics in the middle of sex. How could I refuse a man who like gets that my brain gets turned on by numbers, statistics, and different things? That's hot. <laughs> and like researched the statistics. So cool. <laughs> so when somebody knows you and they know it turns you on and they bring it to the table, that's hot. It's also a way to start to express your sexual energy. So we're going to talk about expression and transmutation more after this commercial break. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time? For a totally different sexual evolution. Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melissa Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melissa Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzayelenich.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. 
We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email. Info at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome, my sweet, sweet pleasure seekers. So for those of you who are listening, we're talking today about sexual energy. We're talking about withholding, expressing, and transmuting sexual energy. Before the commercial, I had mentioned um, Reich, the creator of, or the the person who wrote about maybe Orgon Organite, um, he did create a box um, that he said um, basically was like a way to uh, utilize or mm, I'll explain it a little better. <laughs> okay, so Wilhelm, well, his name is Wilhelm Reich, R-E-I-C-H. He developed a theory that the ability for someone to feel sexual love depended on their physical ability to have sex as determined by what he called orgastic potency. Um, but he also talked a lot about uh, organ and organ stimulators and getting your body stimulated through organ therapy. So organomic therapy was a therapy, um, it was a type of somatic therapy that treats you as a whole person um, in a holistic fashion. It's a mind-body therapy that was developed by um, Wilhelm Reich. So he he was and is considered the father of somatic therapies. So break um, being able to work with uh, Oregon, and and people say that he discovered Oregon, but it's like it's like saying that Christopher Columbus discovered America or that the Vikings discovered North America. Like they didn't discover it. It's always there. They named it. So that is not uh, like new stuff. They named it. Um, so the organ energy from orgasms is what he always referred to. So he was talking about this notion of, of life force energy, orgasmic energy um, in the 1940s. And he started building different technology to assist with that. So so he's interesting. He's an interesting dude. Um, lots of research on like different things with sexual energy and keep getting it um, going and just acknowledging where it is in the universe that it's uh, pretty much everywhere and that we can work with it in different ways. So I like his, his uh, some of his takes on it, especially the somatic um, therapies part of it, because I'm I really enjoy somatic body work and different somatic uh, techniques. So. All right, back to the expression. What is expression of sexual energy? Expression of anything is where you can take a thought and bring it into form. So, or that's how I'm gonna word it. So the dictionary words it differently. Um, the dictionary uh, describes expressing as conveying in words or by gestures and conduct, conveying like a thought or a feeling in words by gestures and conduct. So similar to what I'm saying. Um, so I'm thinking like expression is where we all allow it to move out and through our body and do something with it. Out and through in the same, so creative energy, um, sexual energy may come out through expression. So having actual sex is one way to do that. Masturbation, expressing it. Here's my idea, I'm going to use it. I'm going to do A, B, and C with it. Um, so letting it out, utilizing it. What are some ways that you've ever expressed sexual energy? So it could be through, like honestly, through self-pleasure or pleasure with others. Is I think one of the key ways of expressing it. You, what we're what we'll talk about a little bit is with transmuting is where you would take that energy and do something a little different with it. So you might be like, oh, I've got lots of sexual energy. Um, so somebody who's celibate would transmute it. And they would, and I might have said express it before, but what I really intend to say is that if you are celibate, you would transmute your sexual energy and you would transmute it into, say, for example, uh, it's like, wow, I've got so much sexual energy. I'm going to transmute that into my business and um, I'm going to do 
you know, I'm going to create art with it, or I'm going to dig a garden with it, or um, write a book or whatever. You're going to take that energy and you're going to filter, you're going to flow it into something else. So it's like, you know, if you're really angry, you can also transmute that energy into something else. You can actually take it and go, what would I like to do with this energy? There's so much of it, you know, you might express it through punching, but you might transmute it into um, a bonfire, you know, <laughs> like you, there's different ways you might transmute things or express them. So expressing to me would be taking that energy and doing with it to show what it is that you are sensing or feeling. So if you're sensing or feeling horniness, then expressing sensual energy, sexual energy would be uh, through either uh, self-pleasuring masturbation or self-arousal because self-pleasuring and self-arousal are not always the same like we know that arousal pleasure and desire are not the same it could just simply be for uh, shifting something if you're feeling frustrated if there's a lot of if you have a lot of sexual energy and you're like feeling pent up and you need to move it move it masturbate see if your partner will play with you um, I'm all for really conscious sex, so I'm not really all for like going out on um, different apps and just randomly going and having sex with any anybody anytime. You know, I think there's a lot of questions that need to be asked. There's a lot of because this energy is so incredibly potent. Creative energy is incredibly potent. Sexual energy is that creative energy is that orgasmic energy is incredibly potent. Um, and when you're collaborating on something like sex is a collaboration, you might think it'd be a really good idea to, you know, collaborate with somebody who's got the same um, targets that I have, or is looking to create the similar thing in the world that I'm looking to create. So it can go beyond just the body parts slapping together, you know, which is always interesting because, you know, I get offers <laughs> and it's like, okay, wait a second, but we don't actually have um, a, you don't have the money. B, um, there are other factors involved. And uh, being sapiosexual, I really need people who are actually on target with my brain. My husband's very on target with my brain. And when he's not, and he's, uh, I can often see his targets for his brain and jump on board with him. Um, it's just kind of the nature of who we are as people. So expressing it. So what would you like to do to express your sexual energy? I think for me, a lot of times when I get like, if I get really, really pent up, I might start to bake or cook or I'll make like a feast for a week. And then my body feels very satiated that it's like, uh, so I've transmuted that energy into baking or cooking. Um, and then I might be expressing it as well. I might be like, I need like, I need my 15 minutes to myself. I'm going to go take care of business. Thank God in day and age when I have a teenager that's homeschooled, we have spaces and places on our property that I can just like run to. Um, so, so there is um, there is oftentimes an, a need for expressing it, a need for transmuting it. And it's all, always cool to check because it could be a little bit of both. You might need to express some of it. You might need to transmute some of it. You might need to do one or the other. Oftentimes, though, withholding it for a really long period of time will create, just like I was saying before, like if you're withholding your breath for a certain amount of time, your body will start to shut down. Or if somebody's choking you and not um, allowing you to breathe, whoa, there's some interesting reaction in my body. Whoa, um, that is not cool. Um, so that was in it. So my body gets some like fascinating energetic responses when I do my show. And that one right there was like a massive stab tear in my abdomen like as if somebody was trying to kill me so withholding sexual energy for me is pretty much like a torturous death so i will do other things with it i'll express it i'll transmute it and there are other things i do with it as well but we're going to talk about these main ones today right so when um and check in with yourself and like i was saying if somebody's withholding it from you like if they're so in the instance of, of being choked and not being able to breathe, if somebody's choking you, they're, they are actually um, enforcing on you to not be able to breathe. And that can happen in relationship too, where if your lover is withholding sex from you and you're, you're desiring expressing it, then you can often feel like you're being choked or you're feeling like, oh my God, I think I might be dying because that's my breath of life. 
So knowing how to actually bring that pleasure to yourself if your partner's not interested or if they're mad at you and they're withholding from you, or if they honestly, they just have a lot of sexual inhibitors that prevent them from feeling comfortable and confident to be able to have sex at any given time, because these are all really big factors. There could be hormonal factors. There could be situational factors. Context as well can be a, in a situation that could stop them from wanting to express it. So depending on what's going on, um, you always have you, so you can always use your own body for sexual ex sexual energy expression through, um, and it doesn't have to be masturbation to orgasm. It can literally be allowing your body to move and groove also in a very sensual, sexual way. I think things like belly dancing are incredibly sensual and sexual and a great way to move sexual energy. Um, there's all, like all different kinds of movement stuff where you're getting your pelvis really rocking and rolling and it can, it can bring and move sexual energy because a lot of those movements can be, if you're super like skilled in the sack and you can like rotate your hips in all different directions, like a belly dancer, and you do that while you're having sex, you can mimic a lot of those actions for sex with your body to have your body be able to express that energy. Um, in a very similar way. So it's not just transmission, it's also an expression, somewhat of a transmission as well, because the energy shifts and it's not exactly sex, but it is very sexual. So I think I hope I'm getting clear on that. So we're going to, when we come back, we're going to talk about transmission mostly. So you're listening to the Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network. When we come back, we're going to talk about sexual energy transmission. We'll be right back. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. Today we are talking about sexual energy. What can we do with it? I brought up three things that we can do with it, withholding expressing, transmuting, um, mostly talking about that because that phone call that got triggered on January 1st, the person actually said, I want to learn how to transmute that. I'm like, no, you actually don't. You want to learn how to express it. And you're trying to find a way to express it with me, not the same. Because if you truly want to transmute energy, um, it would take uh, some practice for one, uh, the willingness to be still the willingness to go inside, the willingness to be able to know what, what would I like to do with this energy? This is a phenomenally potent energy. What would I like to do with it? It's like being given an atom bomb and then you're choosing what, how do I utilize this? Like this, you know, this could explode and tear apart the world. Oh, it's incredibly potent. Or what can I, can I change this? Ah, can I do with this, right? So it's incredibly powerful. I mean, maybe the A-bomb is not exactly the best um, comparative, but <laughs> it's powerful, right? Maybe tornado, it can rip through things. It can create new landscapes. It can do all kinds of stuff. Sexual energy is big. So if you could transmute it, and what does transmute mean, right? I forgot to, to talk to you guys about that. So transmuting something is to change in form or nature or substance. Transmutation is like a, a word used in alchemy 
Um, so a subject going from a base metal to like gold, that's transmuting energy. And it's so it's changing its nature or form. So if you're changing the nature or form of sexual energy, what could you turn it into? If you have, say, 20 billion tons of sexual energy flowing in your body, in your body, because I'm not going to say out of your body because it's not transmuted yet, what would you like to flow it out as? What if that 20 billion tons of sexual energy could flow out as um, connections to people, to flow out to have your business grow and flow to create connections just for the sake of friendships to create communities to create um health on the planet in a bigger sense what if our sexual energy could actually heal the planet because i know it can i know it can from my gut instinct not that i've read research on it i know that if we actually utilized our sexual energy we could do things like um you know, have the planet have a lot less toxicity on it, have, you know, clear the pollution, clear all kinds of stuff. We could, if we chose to, if we chose to get diligent and we chose to practice and we chose to utilize the energy in a different way rather than, you know, I'm horny, so I'm going to watch porn and that's how I'm going to get it out. No, we're just adding to levels of interesting uh, toxicity doing that. <laughs> that's my interesting take on it, honestly. Um, but to me, if we're going to utilize this energy that's so incredibly powerful, why not use it to create a space and a place on this planet that is nurturing, loving, caring, and kind? And we can do that. It's just that we just think that all we can do with sexual energy is, uh, well, actually, we've misidentified it as libido, for one. And then we think we have to, to um, because we're aroused, we have to act on it. And again, none, none of those things are true. You can be aroused and not have to act on it. I'll probably say that a million times in my life, but you can be aroused and not have to act on it. Okay, so now we have sexual energy being transmuted into what? So would you like it to be, you know, transmuted into joy? Would you like it to be transmuted into love, into kindness? Um, we have a new show on this network called Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Um, so I wonder if, if she'll be talking about transmuting some of these energies too into kindness. So kindness, um, what a great gift that would be, right? If, if we took all of our sexual energy, it is so incredibly potent. Finding it in our body first, where is it? Where have we located, stored it, held it, withheld it? Um, are we allowing it to grow? Are we allowing it to expand beyond our bodies to just include everybody and everything as we walk around and it touches things? You know, it can absolutely spark flowers to grow and have all kinds of animals like oh be curious about you in fact to the point where we currently have this ermine in our house which is a highly unusual thing it's like this white weasel type uh, creature which is supposed to only be in in like northern Alaska and here I am in like southern Ontario southeastern Ontario and it's random and it's powerful like little creature um and so, you know, I know, I know that my sexual energy attracts a lot of interesting things um, because there's life force energy and in living beings are attracted to it. And that's just the nature of it. When you allow it to grow and grow and grow and grow, and it's okay to let it grow. You don't have to be sexually frustrated with it. You can express it. You can transmute it. Um, today, I'm just going to ask for transmuting all the sexual energy into healing for all the bodies who are stressed who are going through grief, who are going through sadness, and allow all of the energy from my body, sexual energy, to flow to your body as healing energy. It can be sexual energy, and for all of you to receive that, do what you like with it. You can transmute that back if you want, back into sexual energy, but I'm going to flow it out as transmuted energy for healing on a cellular level, on an energetic level, on all levels of all of your uh, energetic bodies. And just allow your bodies to receive in whatever capacity you can. And the day that you're listening to this is the day that you're receiving this because um, it doesn't really matter. Energy has no timeline. There's no definition to it in terms of like, if I flow it to you today on, you know, January 16th of 2023, you're still going to receive it on, you know, January 17th, or you're going to receive it in 2027. Whenever you're listening to this, you'll receive it. So I hope you do. And I hope that you know that you can transmute your sexual energies too, so we can have a greater amazing planet. 
just by choosing it and by flowing it out in different ways or expressing it to create things that are going to be amazing for the planet as well, whether that's new people or whatever. Thank you for listening to The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Jelanić. The Pleasure Zone returns next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.